Okay, so welcome here, everybody. We're just going to start recording now. Um, so that's in progress. Uh, our event is I'm graduating with a psych degree. Now what? Um, so we're very excited to present this to you guys. And um, hopefully we get a lot of good information about what to do with our degrees, how to do job searches. So yeah, we're going to roll into the territorial land acknowledgement now. Um, so it's great to see you all here. And just to get started with the territorial acknowledgement, I uh, just want to take a moment to acknowledge that we at SFU are located on the unceded territory on the shared traditional Coast Salish lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, tsleil tooth Coquitlam, uh, Kikite, Kwantlen, Semamayu, um, and Tawasan peoples on whose traditional territories our three campuses reside on. Um, so there are some links there as well if you want to learn more about land acknowledgements and the land where we are located at. Awesome, thanks, Emily. Um, okay, so yeah, just some very brief introductions before we roll into the presentation here. Uh, myself, Sydney, and Emily, uh, you probably are familiar with us. We are from the psych department, um, and Emily is the advisor and communications coordinator, um, all things psych event related, and I am the engagement programming assistant. Um, and we're joined today by Albert Fung. He is um, the career education manager in SFU Career and Volunteer Services. So he's going to take us through a wonderful presentation today. Um, and that's kind of a little bit about the three of us. So yeah. As for the schedule, um, we're just kind of going to go over introducing potential career pathways to start. Uh, then Albert will give some tips about doing things that are kind of out of the norm or beyond the traditional job search strategy. Um, we're hoping to have the presentation piece wrapped up by around 3 p.m. Um, and that will leave us about 30 minutes to have a panel discussion where you can ask your questions in Slido. Um, anyone can chat about anything that we want um, that came out of the presentation. And then you do have the option to hang around afterwards until 4 p.m. if you're wanting to do that. So yeah, that's kind of our schedule for the event and I'm going to turn it over to Albert now to get started and introduce us to everything. Yeah, thank you again, Sydney and Emily. Uh, hello again, my name is Albert and I'm a career education manager with Career and Volunteer Services. Uh, just so happy to see you all here. Uh, you know, come on, like it's mid-July, the weather is fabulous and it's in the middle of semester, you know, I always feel like you've probably got a million things, other options to do, but you choose to be here. So I'm really grateful. And a great shout out to those who are watching uh, this as a recording as well. Uh, I'm glad that you're able to uh, watch watch this uh, because, you know, once you sort of, uh, you can also sort of fast forward and rewind if you want to, so that makes things a little bit easier. But for folks, those of us who are here, um, you know, we, it's more than just, you know, the three of us talking to you because we really want that interaction because we feel like, again, we only have an hour together. Um, I've got information that I can talk about for like six, seven hours. And, and I imagine that the last thing that you want is just to hear this talking head going on and on and on. Um, so um, so Cindy, Emily and I were thinking, okay, why don't we make this as interactive as possible? And we're planning to use this tool called Slido. So, uh, so you know, if you have another device or it could be the same device, uh, log on to slido.com uh, and then put in the hashtag psychfuture because I believe psychology students have a wonderful future. So Psych Future, uh, you can also, uh, you know, uh, uh, click on the link that Sydney just share or even scan the QR code, whichever is easier. So uh, what I'm planning to do, as you can see on, my, on the share screen, is that we have a dual screen going on. On one side, it is my slide. On the other side is the Slido uh, window. So what I'm going to be doing is that, oops, what I'm going to be doing is that, uh, if you have any questions, um, you can post it anytime. Like we will have an extended panel discussion uh, at, at around three, uh, halfway through. Uh, but if there are any questions that you, perfect, there we go. Thank you. Just on cue, uh, it will show up there. And the best part about Slido is that for, you know, for those of you who might have used it, is that you can upvote it. So if there's a question that you really, really like, um, you really want, you know, you really want to ask uh, that same question, feel free to upvote it. It will 
uh, it will move higher up to the list and so that the three of us can uh, definitely uh, you know, address that either as we go or we'll have more time um, uh, to do that at three o'clock. So uh, yes, this is great, right? Any tips for research opportunities? This is exactly what this is for. Um, so uh, break into non-technical tech jobs, definitely. So uh, so uh, yeah, so we're going to dive into that quite a bit. You know, In fact, I'm going to share with you five different tools uh, that you can use to be able to explore more opportunities. But before that, you know, just as a warm up, <laughs> let's just, uh, you know, just kind of get everyone familiar and comfortable, uh, you know, with Slido. <laughs> so, oh, perfect. People are already answering questions. So, yeah, so just to get a sense of like, where are you at? So, uh, quite a few of you have answers. So if not, um, if you haven't had a chance at, you know, go to the poll section of your Slido uh, and you can answer the first question. So as you can, you know, as you can tell, the majority of us are getting close to graduate. Um, you know, I didn't actually define it by the number of units or credits because, you know, I thought everyone is different. It's just mentality like where are you feeling you're at mentally uh you know because you know you could be like a semester away you feel close you could be a year away you feel close so it looks like you know the majority of you are about to graduate surprisingly none of you have already graduated so uh but it's good to give me a sense of uh who's in the room and where are you at so uh so keep uh you know keep uh keep on answering that and the next question i wanted to ask is I very much acknowledge that, you know, this is not just about the hows, right? Like, oh, this is how you do it. it. Of course, it is about strategies and ideas and resources. But in, you know, in my, you know, in my practice or in, you know, in my, you know, I, I actually do talk to a lot of students and we, I want to, I, you know, I hear about their stories, their situations. And, and I hear that not only there are questions, but there are also a lot of sort of this emotional experience that goes with it. So my question for all of us is, what emotions are you experiencing as you're thinking about job search? So I'm going to move to the next question here. So this is a word cloud. So I'm going to keep this window on so that you can see as, um, you know, as folks have entered. What emotions are you experiencing uh, with job search? It could be a word or two. It could be a phrase. Um, it's pretty flexible. But just want to give you, uh, give us a minute, right? Um, and as you can see, because this is a word cloud, uh, words that more than one person have used is bigger. Uh, I know I'm pointing out the obvious. So you can see like, you know, anxious, anxiety, nervous. Absolutely. Uh, you know, on the other hand of the spectrum, there's also excitement, curiosity. So just want to say a big thank you for those who have... Um, <clears throat> Uh, drop, you know, uh, you know, uh, share a word or two and keep on doing that, you know, we'll keep this on for, you know, for the next few seconds. Um, yeah, and and I really appreciate for for sharing that. And and I and I feel like I, I you know, I, I, I usually start a job search workshop with an exercise like this, because, again, I don't know about you, but I do feel like there are, you know, when students reveal to me, they are nervous, they're anxious, they're stressful. Sometimes they would feel like, hmm, am I the only one who is going through this, right? as you, you know now as you can tell looking at the job uh, looking at the word cloud you're definitely not the only one right in fact i would even go on to acknowledge and say and normalize that if you're experiencing this um you you because you're a human being right uh and for crying out loud we're still in the middle of a pandemic that seems to seize no end to it and when we're talking about our future you know uh there's so much in it that you know, that you couldn't help but to be nervous and anxious and confused. And I just want to say, I want to acknowledge that. And I want you to say that, I want to say that this is a safe space for you to share that. And later on, we'll have a chance to uh, to have more Q&A and have a panel discussion. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I want to acknowledge that this is what all we're going through right now. And if you're going through this, uh, you know, you're definitely not alone. And my hope is that, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that, oh yeah, after this workshop, you will feel like amazing. But I, what I do want, what my hope for all of us is that if at the end of this workshop, it, you know, it shifted the needle just a little bit away from nervousness and confusing and anxiety to a little bit more hopeful, resourceful, or feeling the sense of uh, self-advocacy, like that would be my hope uh, for this session. So thank you again for sharing that. I'm going to go back to the Q&A. Wow, lots of questions. That is awesome. Keep them coming. So 
Uh, the first part of my presentation, the next 10 minutes or so, uh, well, actually, I'm already quite behind, but um, I wanted to share with you five quick tools to discover your potential career pathways. Because one thing that, uh, you know, we wanted to, uh, we wanted, I wanted to share with you is that think about this 80,000 hours, right? Some people have done the math and say, these are, <laughs> these are the many hours that we'll spend do, you know, at work, right? So what are you, you know, how are you planning to spend this 80,000 hours? Would it be work that is engaging, aligned with who you are as a person, interesting, uh, uh, meaningful, right? Or is this something that, you know, is, is anything about that? Um, Think about this notion, right? You know, how do you, how, what do you consider in terms of being success, right? Sadly, uh, our society mostly talk about, you know, it's just your job title and how much money you make, right? But again, depending on who you are and where you're coming from, there's more than one way of measuring that success, right? Like this lovely Instagram graphics from uh, Liz and Molly, um, you know, mental health is a huge part of that, right? Uh, you know, doing, liking what you do, you know, your physical health, your free time. And for many of us, there could be other parts of it as well. So I just wanted to start getting us thinking that, hey, it's more than just a job title and how much money you make. Um, and if there's one thing, you know, that I really want to share with you is that you are more than your major, right? Because it's inevitable that in a, you know, in a university setting, we'll say, oh, I am a blank student, you know, I'm a blank major, you know, I'm this, I'm, but in the reality, you know, besides your education, you know, what is your background? What are your hobbies? What are things that you care about? You might have part-time jobs, internships, volunteering, um, you know, and it all add to that richness, right? And then, you know, and for many of you who are about to graduate, imagine, you know, in the near future, you know, you're sitting at your own convocation and the person who sits next to you also happened to be a psych major, right? But just because you both graduated with a psych degree, does that make you two almost the identical person, right? Far from it, far from it, right? So I just want to acknowledge that everything that is about you that gets you to this point of your life, your life experience, skills, knowledge, education, everything counts in terms of looking at possibilities. So you are more than your major. So it is important that, you know, before I show, you know, do some demos on the tools that you want to get some clarity in terms of thinking about what is it that I wanted to focus my energy in, right? Uh, because part of this could, you know, for many of us could be identifying challenges, you know, you want to work on, not so much just looking at job postings, or I mean, sort of job titles or industries. But you know, maybe for you, it's like, wow, like, you know, when you see, um, you know, people who are refugees who are running away from a war torn country, you, you know, really feel like, you know, your heart goes out to them, you know, or for many of you, it could be, you know, food insecurity, right? So it could also be a challenge that you want to work on. And perhaps looking at some organizations or employers that could do that, right? Um, second thing is do a skill audit, right? I couldn't say enough about especially, uh, you know, um, students with, you know, with an arts degree is that there's so much, so many transferable skills that, that you can leverage in terms of, you know, anything from critical thinking to, you know, to writing skills, to presentation skills that really can be leveraged in so many different ways. And last but not least is that consider a stopgap or transitional approach, right? You know, maybe there are a particular area that you really want, you know, really want to be, right? But, you know, given that you still have 80,000 hours ahead of you, does it mean that you have to get there immediately, right? Or if you feel like you can't get there right away, what are the transitional steps that help that could help you to build experience and build connections so that you can get to where you want to? So on that note, allow me to share with you five different tools and, you know, and the way I'm going to approach it is I'm, I'm going to do this sort of as a rapid fire type of style where, you know, I'm going to show you, you know, only be showing you a minute or two. I can understand that for some of us, it'll be like, whoa, 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 this is way too fast. But the intention is to show you uh, a few tools. I actually have another 15 or so, but obviously with the time that we have, um, you know, we only have a limited one. Um, but the idea is to 
say, hey, there are all these tools out there, even if you wanted to spend only five minutes or 10 minutes, right? And even you can do it while I'm doing the demo. I wanted to <laughs> encourage or, uh, or motivate that even if you only have a few minutes, you might be able to find something that it was never previously on your radar before. So a great place to start is this tool called What Can I Do With The Degree? And so I'm going to conveniently slide that. So this is a this is a tool that we put together from Korean Volunteer Services. And if you scroll down, um, the resources are organized by faculty. And you know, and let's check out psychology down here. And so this gives you a really good landing place to start, right? Again, I wanted to start with saying that, hey, you're more than your major, but you know, if you want a good place to start, like, you know, there are some, you know, uh, sections about skills you will develop. Uh, career possibilities, potential work environment, but also check out some of the professional association, right? So this would be a really good place to start. And thank you again, Sydney, for dropping that code. Uh, I'm sorry, dropping the URL there. Uh, on top of that, you know, we're just on the cusp of launching a new version. So right now, when you go there, it is a, um, you know, it is a version that, you know, we are in the process of updating is really a matter of weeks. Uh, hopefully by sometime in July, it will be posted. So uh, keep that on your bookmark and come back and check out a slightly updated version of that. So this could be a really good one to start. Another tool that I want to share with you is called Career Cruising. So some folks might have used it, uh, you know, might have used that in their high school days, you know, where you might answer a whole bunch of questions and they spit out, say, hey, you should be doing these jobs. Um, you know, if you've been using that, it's probably not the best way to use it because it is really just focusing on your interest and what are the match. But, you know, let me show you a way of using it. So, uh, you know, the link that, um, you know, Cindy, if you don't mind sharing the link uh, on the on the chat. So basically, once you log in via the SFU portal, uh, you know, you will be given a password and user ID and you can log in. And one way, you know, one good way of looking at it is, you know, and type in any job titles uh, that you're aware of. Uh, let's say social worker. So basically, it gives you a really quick profile, occupational, it's a, in a very general way, right? You know, some attributes, abilities, core tasks. But what is really interesting in terms of looking for alternate possibilities is this idea called related careers, right? So if you put in the word social worker, you might be already aware of it, but there could be so many different titles that you might, you know, that are similar to social worker, but it's different in another sense, right? If you think Think about anything from you know art and music therapist to to, uh, to you know to ESL teacher you know to school counselor. They're similar in one sense, but very different in other sense as a social worker. So this is a really good way to just to expand uh, the possibilities that you haven't think of, right? So the idea is not so much that oh I'm making a decision by checking this out, but it's actually just to add some ideas. And if you click on something like, you know, uh, ESL teacher, you can also click on the related careers and it has a different sets of related careers. So this is a really good way to, again, you know, learn more about different possibilities just to add to, you know, your long list of ideas uh, about, you know, about what is possible. The next one I want to share with you is LinkedIn Alumni Finder. I know that as soon as I mentioned LinkedIn, you know, some of you might get a little nervous because I'm like, whoa, you know, I've never used LinkedIn before. You know, I don't know if this is going to work. But the idea is that, you know, even if you've just created LinkedIn, like an account five minutes ago, you can do this. So once you log in, uh, you know, the quite, you know, the thing that is really helpful with this LinkedIn alumni finding tool uh, is to, you know, is to give us a sense of, hey, what are the other folks who have graduated with the same degree as me uh, ended up doing? So basically, sorry, I kind of, you know, was talking and doing at the same time. So basically you put in Simon Fraser University or any school for that matter, right? Click view page. Once you get here, click alumni. And, you know, no big deal. There are only 143,000 alumni on this. But perhaps what you might want to key on is look for psychology. Well, there are 9,000 students who, uh, you know, who have done psychology. And, you know, let's just look for somebody who's more recent, right? Since maybe 2000, maybe 2010, right? And, you know, maybe perhaps some of you are curious about, hey, what is it like to work in, you know, community and social services, right? So you really wanted to sort of, 
filter it down a little bit. So once you filter it down, you know, you scroll down and you realize, wow, these are all the people who have a, you know, psychology degree with SFU and I wonder what they're doing. So, uh, and I'm going to click on this person who doesn't have a picture. I don't know why, um, but this person, Linus. Uh, so Linus, uh, so you can, you know, so when you click on one's profile, you get an idea, okay, Linus graduated with a BA. Uh, in 2016, ended up becoming a career development practitioner. Of course, like I think the algorithm for me is biased because I'm a career educator, so I see a lot of this. But if you scroll down further, you know, um, you know, these are all folks that you know may or may not be connected to you, uh, but you will see sort of their um, basically their career path, right? What do they ended up doing uh, shortly after they graduate? And then how did they end up doing what they're doing right now? So this is a really good way to also see what are the possibilities? What are, you know, because these are all real people, right? These are not just examples. These are real people with the real LinkedIn profiles to give you an idea of what's possible with a psychology degree. So next one, um, this is another really good one. Um, for those of us, you know, in the room who are curious about working with people uh, or in the social services sector, this is actually a great tool. So BC211 uh, essentially is a directory of social services available in BC. So it was mainly designed for people who are accessing the services. But as somebody who is perhaps aspired to work with people or in the social services sector or not-for-profit sector, you can think about, hey, maybe you have a, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, very much interest in supporting people who are homeless, right? So you're looking at, you know, so when you click click on, you know, click on a particular type of services, uh, hang on a second. Oh, right here. So maybe you can say, just say, you know, uh, don't allow. So Vancouver, BC, uh, and you're like, okay, I'm curious about emergency shelter, right? Let's see what's come up. So the idea is not so much that you're accessing a services as a client, but you know, but these are all services that are that exist. So if you're interested in working with people who are, you know, who are surviving with, uh, you know, with homelessness or dealing with homelessness, these are organizations that you can look into, that you can check out, because behind every one of these names are perhaps workers. Uh, you know, volunteers, uh, board members, people who work really hard to uh, to keep these services uh, going uh, for you know for you know for people who needed it the most, right? So that's another tool that we'll be really using. So, oh my goodness, yeah. So catching my breath here. So the last one, you know, or the least obvious one is job posting sites, right? Some of you might wonder, well, you know, what do you mean by, you know, job posting sites? I'm looking, I'm not exactly looking for work yet. Well, technically, you can actually use a job posting sites as a way to explore what are the possibilities out there, right? Because with career cruising, it is a, you know, it is a career uh, in terms of a profile, it's a general profile, it might not dive into something so detailed. But when you're looking at job posting sites, these are actual postings, these are actual jobs that exist. So it gives you an idea of, hey, what are different organizations to hire? Like the example that I give here is, I put in refugee worker, right? So um, it could be different organizations that hire uh, folks who work with um, refugees. Uh, you get a sense of perhaps what are the work requirements? Uh, sorry, what are the job requirements? What are the qualifications? Uh, more importantly, how much money? Uh, uh, you know, if, you know, if, if this is important to you. So the idea is that, you know, you can put in different, a variety of job titles and get a sense of what's out there, what is available. Again, even though these are actual job posting sites, it only represents a tiny, tiny fraction of what exists because these are vacant positions. But nonetheless, if you combine that with some of the information that you get through career cruising, it does give you a little bit of a fuller picture. All right, so I kind of do this in rapid fire style in, um, you know, in this sort of uh, uh, 10 minutes. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I, you know, I'm just going to share with you a couple other things because I'm, you know, I'm seeing a ton of really great questions. So I really want to move forward to that. Um, so, oh, by the way, there's also a slide here, um, you know, something that you can check out all the different possibilities. Uh, you know, again, some of the some of the some of the links are embedded. So once you get the slides in PDF form, you can definitely click on that. Um, so I'm not going to dive in too much there. Uh, but I also promise uh, all of us that we will talk a little bit about 
tips beyond the traditional job search, right? Because depending on the research that you look into, 80% um, of jobs are not posted online, right? So we look at all the stuff that was just posted uh, and 80% of them are not because for a lot of organizations, um, going through this whole entire process of uploading a job postings, um, you know, processing hundreds and hundreds of applicants, shortlist them, interview them, it's actually a long process. So many of them choose not to do that. And, you know, if you think about this sort of percentage, right, if 75% of people use online applications as the only way or primary way of searching, and only 2% get through the door interview, and only one of them get hired. So your competition, uh, or, you know, or the people that you are competing with are quite a bit quite a bit more. So the idea is that, you know, 70 to 85% of opportunities are found through connections. So I'm not here to say that, yeah, like just forget about job postings, right? But my main point is that if you're only looking at job postings, you're missing out on the, not only the other 20, you know, 80% of jobs that are not posted, but you're also competing with that many more people. So the questions become, well, you know, how do I get connected with opportunities that are out there, that some of these opportunities, maybe I know what I'm looking for, but some opportunities are like, I don't even know what's out there. I have a sense of what I'm interested. So how do you do that? So allow me to quickly share a few really quick ideas through the lens of some of these students that our team at Career Volunteer Services have worked with. So Karen, um, you know, uh, Karen have given us permission to share her story. Uh, she was a student in, um, you know, studying at ger gerontology, uh, and she was an inter uh, she was an international student and. She wasn't really sure, uh, you know, how to get started with her career. So she talked to her professor. Her professor referred her to an organization that was looking for a volunteer. And then by the time that she started volunteer there, her volunteer supervisor referred her to an other organization that could be hiring. And she reached out to a colleague of this volunteer supervisor. So to keep the long story short, you know, by the time sort of this sort of third degree, the third person she talked to was able to you know, was able to introduce her to a position that was available working with seniors. And this position wasn't even posted, but it was introduced or re being referred to her uh, by her volunteer supervisor. So you never know for those of us who volunteer, uh, you know, this is a great place to connect with people to look at possibilities that are out there. Um, Another story that I want to share with you is Tegan, right? Tegan study, um, you know, is a recent resource and environmental management grad. I know she's not a psych major or minor, uh, but her story is interesting in terms of starting a climate hope project block, um, you know, that allow her to connect with like-minded people through social media, right? So I added a link here. So uh, if you're interested to check out her interview that we uh, that we did with her on YouTube, uh, on our, um, on the Career Volunteer Services YouTube channel, you can check that out. And, you know, just by starting a block, you know, it became opportunities to connect with other people, which show her what the, uh, some of the possibilities for her. Uh, Eric uh, is, uh, you know, as a science and chemistry grad, and uh, he graduated quite a few years earlier, but what he did is he started his own YouTube channel, right? Um, again, I know this sounds so obvious, uh, but again, you know, when you're able to put your passion and interest, and it also give him a chance to interview other folks, connect with other people, this becomes a platform for him to connect with people. So, uh, so we're not going to show uh, Eric's video, but you can definitely check that out on the slide. Um, Nicholas' story is also a very interesting one. Yeah, he, you know, uh, he found his full time full time job uh, um, on on a specific job that didn't even exist. So while he was volunteering for a not for profit organization, he identified a particular need that the organizations are not meeting. So as he wrap up his time there as a volunteer, because he's graduating, he approached the CEO of that organization and say, "Hey, like." this idea or this need for our clients are not being met. Like if you hired me, you know, I can, you know, I can help you with this. And that's how this discussion turned into an interview, turns into a job offer and turns into, you know, sort of Nicholas sort of brick in terms of getting his first job after graduation. Uh, last story I want to share with you is Hadil's uh, story. Uh, Hadil, uh, again, you know, in one of these workshops, she, you know, she she heard of this LinkedIn alumni finding tool that we introduced, and you know, of course, she is a bit 
you know, you know, um, uh, ambivalent about, you know, doing something like this. But, you know, once she started, you know, playing around with it, she actually found a person that she's really curious <laughs> in connecting. Uh, and what happens? Uh, let's listening. Let's listen to her story here. I have a clip of um, of our interview that we've done with her. I made sure. Oops. LinkedIn. So I know a lot of times throughout the years, people are always like, just use LinkedIn, like LinkedIn's meant for that. And I'd be like, no, like, I just rather not like I'll look at job postings. Like, I don't have to deal with that. Um, but I reached a point where I was like, okay, like, I know that I'm interested in policy. I know I'm interested in international development. Uh, so let me go on LinkedIn and look for some people that I can gain inspiration from that I can learn from. So I started off by just uh on linkedin i went on to like global affairs canada and then i clicked on to like the people to like look at the certain people that work there and i just spent some time like it was just in between like when i was watching something or just doing other random stuff i would just like search through a bunch of people um and then look at their profiles and if i felt like they were doing something that i wanted to do and they had like a similar experience than me i would just straight up message them and it's really it's really kind of awkward when you think about like having to message the stranger um, but I just thought to myself, like, I want to utilize them as a, another resource, right? Like, they have a lot of insight into what they're doing, how they got there. And it's a good way for me to learn a little bit more. Um, and also, like, a lot of these people want to have conversations. Like, they've been through the struggle and they want to let people know how to make it easier. So I just picked, like, I think it was to, from, as an example, from the global affairs one, I picked, like, five to six people. And I just straight up messaged them like, hey, my name is Hadil. Like I'm currently in my last semester of my undergrad. I'm interested in this. And based on looking at your profile, um, I see that you're working as this. And I was just wondering if I could gain some insights and knowledge into what you currently do and how you got there. And then, so that was basically like my script. And then I just attached a, if you have, um, um, I know you're busy, but if you have like 15 to 20 minutes of your time, like that would be greatly appreciated. And I sent that out to six people. Um, and then I thought to myself, okay, don't take anything personally. Like not everybody responds, like it's not a big deal. Um, and out of those six people, just from the global affairs one, one lady responded and she responded a week late too. So it just kind of shows you that I, the way I think about it when it comes to reaching out is that the, what is the worst case scenario? And the worst case scenario is that they say no, right? And if they say no, they don't know me. They've never met me. They probably will never meet me. Um, so it doesn't necessarily matter. Just focus on like the end goal of one out of those six people responding. I made sure that I utilize. Oops. All right. So, yeah, so this is a really great, like, you know, this is one of my favorite stories to share with students. Again, I love the way Hadil put it. It's still kind of awkward and weird, but the message sort of that sort of, uh, the message I get out of it is, Hey, you know, even if one out of 10 person respond, that's one more person that you can talk to. So thank you Hadil for that. Um, again, you know, I know I, you know, there are tons of questions on the Slido, so I really want to quickly wrap this up. But in terms of, you know, a couple of things I want to highlight, you know, make sure that, you know, it's never too late or too early uh, to, start, to start your LinkedIn profile. Um, you know, it is kind of like your live resume, you know, your headline and summary is important. I can spend another two hours just doing a LinkedIn profile, but you can access this free course that the university has purchased for all students. Uh, it's an online master's class uh, by a couple of uh, 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 people who used to work for LinkedIn. So sign up for this free course. Uh, you know, I totally sounded like some sort of a pitch or something like that. You know, I do not get commission. It's just a resource that we have for students. So check out this online masterclass in terms of using LinkedIn to connect with people and how to leverage uh, LinkedIn in terms of doing your exploration and, and, and connecting with others. Um, another thing that you might not have thought of, right, on top of the, re you know, typical resume cover letter, portfolio is also important. You know, again, you know, I, I, I get that. Some of you might be wondering, well, I, I, like, I have a psychology degree. Like, what, what do I have to, you know, to, to showcase? But again, you're, you know, you're not defined by your major. So depending on the work that you're going into, show is always better than tell. If there's a way of, you know, putting together some pictures of a report and, you know, a, 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 um, a, an essay or a presentation, or maybe there are 
maybe for example you really wanted to work with you know uh you know seniors or refugees and you've done some research paper and you have some knowledge on that like showcase that like if, if there's any way that you can put it in a blog a, you know a visual format uh that always sort of give you a great sense of so these are just some examples of different students from different disciplines but i just want to sort of help you, you know get inspired about what you can do uh in terms of you know in terms of doing uh you know doing having a portfolio that can visually so showcase your work so again uh some resources here uh you know i'll check it out uh there's also a couple of things i want to share with you in the slides uh we have a career action toolkit uh, again, you know, it's about six and seven pages of links that you can check out. There's also a guide of where to find remote work. Again, I can talk about this all day long, but I'm much more interested in diving into these questions that you're posted with uh, Emily and Sydney. And okay, um, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll just wrap up this portion of it with this quote, right? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Uh, I know that at the very beginning of the of my presentation, we talk a lot about sort of that emotions that we all go through, right? That anxiety, that uncertainty, that nervousness. Uh, and, the, and if there's one thing that students have taught me, you know, in their job search journey is that um, they do this with their friends, you know, they do it with other fellow graduates who are also in a similar situation uh, so that they can support one another, they can, you know, vent with one another, uh, and more importantly, you know, uh, they can support one another because sometimes this does feel like a roller coaster, right? Um, so anyway, so I couldn't get to this fast enough uh, because we've got a ton of questions uh, and, you know, and a lot of you have upvoted that. So, Emily and Sydney, how should we how should we approach this? Because I see lots of good questions here. Um, do we start from the top? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think we should. Yeah, we should start with the ones that are kind of upvoted the most here. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that has ten upvotes at the top is a popular question. I think just across disciplines, when you're in post secondary, um, I know this experience very well. <laughs> from <laughs> things changing a little bit, and maybe you're not sure what you want to do. What you started off wanting to do is not what you want to do towards the end of your degree. Um, and so, I think it's a great question to ask. Um, I'm not sure where I want to go. I thought counseling, but now I know that's not for me. Um, any other psych pathways that don't lead to corporate HR or academia? The answer is absolutely yes. You just have to know, um, like Albert's kind of been presenting, what to look for, where to look, and who to connect with, I think more so than anything. Just to even give a brief example, as a psych student myself, is that a lot of people don't think about writing um, careers in the writing industry that they're always looking for people with psychology degrees to write for newspapers, news outlets, um, online magazines, uh, to do social media that's kind of like mental health and psychology related, all that kind of stuff. So there's a whole other world that's kind of outside of the traditional corporate side if you don't want to do research and clinical professions um, that you can get into. And I mean, we all surely have built some form of writing skills if we're in a psych degree. Um, and I find that for me, I've written a lot of psych articles. Um, I was able to get involved in that kind of stuff through SFU, uh, through student clubs and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's even just one brief example of the different possibilities that are out there. I don't know if Emily, you have more to add to that on different. Yeah, that. yeah, for sure. I just want to add on to what Sydney was saying. When it comes to your psych degree, I just want to say that your the world is your oyster. Um, that's the thing with BA degree, psych degrees, that you can do so much with it. And so I think what would really help is just taking a step back to reflect on, you know, what do you like? What do you dislike? What are your strengths? What kind of populations that you want to work with? And I think how you can, you know, get to that point is trying new things, volunteering. I always tell students to volunteer, get involved with your student union, get involved with student clubs, um, get involved, you know, on campus, you know, check out the volunteer services webpage. The other thing I would also suggest is co-op. Co-op really, really helped me. Um, so you want to check out co-op, the arts co-op page. I can put the link in, in the chat there. But for me, I did a few co-ops at SFU. And if it wasn't for co-op, I wouldn't be here because when I did co-op, I did a co-op with the university. And when you get into co-op, you can apply to a variety of different positions. There's nonprofits, there's you know government positions, there's 
opportunities at SFU, there's opportunities in corporate settings, you can apply to as many as you're qualified for. And so for me, I did about three or four co-op positions. Most of them were at SFU, but in uh, different departments. And from there, I kind of gradually built up my resume, my experiences. I made those connections on campus. And it was because of those connections that I got to um, apply for this program assistant role. I was there for about two years in student services. Afterwards, I really enjoyed working with students. And then after I saw a position come up in, in psychology and I was able to apply and have the opportunity to work here. So I think when it comes to you know, your degree, as what Albert was saying, you're not defined by your degree. You're not defined by doing a psych degree. And the other thing is, when it comes to psych degree, it's not just counseling. It's not just become a psychologist. I feel personally that only, let's say, 10 to 20% of people who do a psych degree actually go into those fields, especially psychology grad programs. So I think definitely don't limit yourself. Um, you know, like I was saying, you know, get involved, put yourself out there. I know it's hard, especially, you know, if you're busy with coursework. And I think it does take um, a bit of courage to put yourself out there, whether it's volunteering or even doing co-op. It's a big first step, but just know that what you put in is what you'll get out of it. So when you put in the effort, you talk to different people, meet new friends, it's all going to come back and it's all going to be beneficial. And some of the best people that I've met is through volunteering. Like some of my best friends I still have right now in my life are people I met at, at SFU. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Yeah. Wow. There's so much there that I, you know, I, I absolutely agree to 110%. If there's mm -hmm. one thing I want to add is that, you know, this realization that, you know, that Sydney and Emily just share, you know, they might have just said it in 30 seconds, right? But I, you know, I would imagine if you have a time traveling machine to visit Sydney and Emily back, you know, when they are still, you know, discovering or discerning their possibilities, there might be, there, there might have been other things on their radar that didn't quite turn out, right? So I just want to say that this is a process. This is not like, oh yeah, like, you know, you could, you know, you, you, you know, if you, if some of those tools you find it encouraging, great, but it's, you know, but it's also important to as not assume that after five minutes, it will just all become clear, right? It will take this process of trial and error, because part of it is, is to get that sort of firsthand experience for you, because just because one person say, this is awesome, for you, it could be, you know, it could be just as awesome, or it could be, well, you know, this is not really my cup of tea, right? So it will be a journey, it will be a process, uh, and it takes time, so. Yeah, I agree with that. I also think that it's a matter of looking at where your strengths are as a person outside of your degree and seeing how you can apply that too. Um, I think we all have things that we're good at that are probably outside of psychology and things that make us us as people and you might be surprised what you can find to fit into a career path with some of your personal interests um like if you don't want to go into counseling but maybe the reason you wanted to go into counseling is because you're more of like a human focused person and you are a people focused person and you like to be supportive um, you know, people have touched on nonprofits, Emily and Albert have, and that's a great way to connect with people. The RCMP looks for people to go into like case management and support work for, you know, like victims of domestic violence and stuff like that. Those are jobs that I was just looking at the other day that you can do with a psych degree that aren't necessarily counseling jobs. So they don't have that layer of pressure or if you don't like the counseling environment. Um, but there, there's a lot of opportunity there. If you're somebody who is a very artistic person, a very highly creative person, like I said, there's writing jobs. There's also the option to go into things like music and art therapy, which are very, very different from classical academia or clinician roles and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot that you can do. So to answer the question that I see here that says, would you say I should try to gain as much experience within the psych field to have a higher chance of getting a job afterwards? Yes, I would say that, but I would say also try to gain experience outside of that as well. Like Emily was touching on, branch out into different opportunities. I've written for an international college women's magazine as a volunteer. I've been an athlete at our school. There's a lot of opportunities I would say to explore yourself. Um, and I would do that in addition to what you try to do in psych, getting into research labs, that kind of stuff. Cause that's where you'll really find, I think what, what you can make of your career path. Um, so that's, that's kind of my two cents on that, but it looks like our yeah. next most upvoted question is how do I transition into HR as a psych student? Anyone have thoughts or tips on that? 
Yeah, I, and in fact, I see the next few are, you know, similar in nature in terms of, you know, transitioning into HR or transitioning into social work or transitioning into marketing. Um, I, I would say part of it is, you know, I, I think, you know, Sydney made great example is, is do your research, right? Because again, there are, even when we say human resources, it's such a really wide field. So some of the tools that I've shared with you earlier, like use those tools to identify what are those positions called? Take a look at what there are what the requirements some obviously uh would require further education such as you know counseling work or you know even you know even some sort of clinical work that are in the social work field uh but some doesn't have to be right or you know for some it would be like you know i might not i'm, I'm not 100 sure if i really want to do human resources but can i get my foot in the door as in you know as in the men you know or as a sort of entry level so that you're in that environment to give you a sense of like you know do i want to invest in another year to do this HR certificate or, you know, another, you know, do I want to invest in the next few years or go to going into the master's? So part of that, when we say big trans, the word transition is sort of looking at what's out there, what's available, and then start asking yourself, what are some of the things that uh, I have skills, experience, you know, within the degree and outside of the degree that align with, uh, you know, One thing I would add on top of that is that if you're looking at job postings that are within those sectors, especially where HR is concerned or where things that aren't more traditionally psych are concerned, if you're looking at a posting and it says bachelors of education or, you know, bachelors of administration or other related field, that is also you. <laughs> so don't think that it's not. And the jobs that I've secured in the past um, with my education has meant that I have always applied for those things. And it's just a little bit of believing in yourself, I would say, is all it takes is that if you're looking at something and you're thinking, okay, I might hit about like four or five out of six of the points for this job, or I don't have a bachelor's in education, but what is a related field? You're probably a related field. And if you can put a cover letter together that you can draw from past experience from a variety of places where that comes from, you'd be surprised at what comes out of that. Um, so I wouldn't, don't turn something down when you see something like other related field. Um, because a lot of times psychology is something that comes into play there, like, especially, yeah, there's, there's so many different opportunities. People don't even think about the amount of times that students transfer into really serious careers like law and medicine with an undergrad in psychology. Like there's literally mm -hmm. just options across the board. Um, yep. so yeah, I would say believing in yourself is a really big part of it is when you're looking at opportunities think of yourself as a comprehensive person, not just somebody who did psych coursework and use that to kind of propel you forward. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I also was just gonna mention that even for myself as a psych major, I graduated about a few years ago, a lot of my work experiences were not directly tied to my psychology degree. So for example, when I did internships for my co-op, they were more marketing related. And so I knew that for myself, I wanted to build my skills on social media, um, on communication. So because of that, I applied for co-ops related to that field. So I definitely would say, don't limit yourself know that first psychology is such a transferable program. You're learning about human behavior. Any job requires you to work with people, right? So I think building on that, getting yourself involved in volunteering on campus, off campus, I put in some links there in the chat, because how I see with your psych degree is that your degree is not just your coursework, right? You're doing so many things to build yourself, to grow yourself as a person, and you're also meeting other people. So I think for yourself, um, just realize that first, firstly, it's okay if you don't know what you want to do right away. Second of all, your degree doesn't define you. How you would define your degree, look back in terms of your memories, you know, whether it's co-op, whether it's volunteering, the people that you meet, all those things will, you know, make you more, more well-rounded, I would say. It's not just about your coursework. So that's what I really emphasize is getting yourself involved. And it's not too late, whether, you know, it's in your third year or your fourth year. I think the most important thing is just putting yourself out there and just taking that first step. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Thank you. So uh, still lots of questions. So should we keep, you know, keep moving forward? I actually see a couple of uh, questions that are related to grad school. So this person asked, how can I prepare myself for grad school? Uh, there's also another person that said any suggestions for someone who is not sure whether they want to go go to grad school. So maybe we can tackle 
the sort of the grad school related together? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what for are sure. Your thoughts? Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, I'm I'm graduating this term, um, and I'm still <laughs> a little bit in the realm of not being 100% sure what I want to do and what I want to go into. So I'm probably in the same boat as a lot of you are in right now. Um, and from my perspective, I did take a strong research focus in my psych degree. Um, and that has been something that's taught me a lot. Um, and there's also kind of different ways that you can do that. So I want people to be aware of that as well. So if you're feeling like you're on the fence about grad school, um, there are ways that you can expose yourself to what that environment is like early on in an undergrad degree. Um, I would recommend trying to reach out to labs um, from an earlier point because sometimes it can take a while to get your foot in the door. But also don't neglect that if there are you know, opportunities you're looking for specifically with grad school, a certain domain of criminology, a certain domain of psychology, and that's either not offered at SFU or there's just no option for you to get into those labs you can also look elsewhere. And I was able to get into a UBC lab in my undergrad, and that was where my research exposure came from. Um, and I was actually a really attractive candidate to them for some of the unique coursework that SFU offers in psych. So I think that if you're on the fence about grad school, the best thing you can do is either try to connect with other students who are in labs um, and see if there's anything they can do to kind of bring you in to share their experience. Um, I would also go and watch like the events that we've put together, like the research engagement and directed studies panel to see if you want to try going in with a professor and trying to get your foot in the door that way. But the best thing you can do is try to expose yourself to those opportunities in your undergrad to see if that's what you want. And for me, I did that and have since discovered that I don't think I want to go into clinical practice <laughs> or academia. So for me, um, rather than feeling discouraged by that and being like, oh man, I, that was something that I thought that I wanted to do. Um, I'm actually not, I'm glad that I had the exposure to be able to get my foot really far in the door there and see that I don't think it's for me. Um, and I still feel that there's a lot of prospects out there with my degree, but yeah, that's my two cents about that. Thank you, Sydney. Um, Albert, let me know if you want to. You go ahead. Okay, sure. I was just going to say that um, when it comes to grad school, I also would say it depends on what your end goal is. Like if you're considering grad school, but you're not also not sure what kind of grad program, it also depends. Okay, do I want to become a psychologist? Do I want to become a counselor? If that is the case, then I do think, you know, doing grad school is a great stepping stone for you to get to that career. But if you're thinking of grad school, but the reason is because you're not sure what you want to do next, I think it's a good uh, step to kind of take a step backwards and just reflect on what is it that I actually want to do because sometimes you don't need grad school to do what your end goal is. For example, if you want to help people, you want to work with certain populations, sometimes a grad degree is not required. And even for myself, when I was taking um, psych courses during my undergrad, I thought that I want to become a psychologist. And as I took more courses in psychology, I, similar to Sydney, I realized that I actually don't want to go into research. I don't want to take further schooling because that's not what I want to do. So because of that, I decided to do, you know, co-op, volunteering, and I discovered so many other opportunities. So that's something else I would kind of consider as well is what is your end goal? And also what would you say would help you in terms of figuring that out, whether it's, you know, volunteering, you know, thinking back in terms of your own strengths or weaknesses, as we talked about your likes and your dislikes, because I think that's really important as well in terms of carving out where your potential career path might be, which may or may not include grad school. So well said, Emily. Yeah, that was exactly, you know, along the same line. So do your research, right? So because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the questions, uh, you know, are, you know, are even involved, hey, are there opportunities in this area, you know, and I see many of us who have sort of interested in both crim and psychology, like, you know, the combination of that, right? I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, you know, the three of us certainly don't have all the answers in the world. But we trust that, hey, the fact that you've got through the, your degree to this point, you're smart cookies, like you can research, you can, you know, you can, um, you know, apply some of those ideas that we talked about and, and to do that research. And I, and if there's one thing that I can't emphasize enough is that everyone's path is different, right? Everyone's way of getting to what they want, but more importantly, uh, as they are traveling along that path or adventure, they might realize something different than what they start with. So what I want to encourage you is, you know, we, you know, 
uh, you know, instead of us telling you, oh, there are opportunities there, there are opportunities there, like, you know, maybe, maybe it could be right or wrong. But the most important thing is you engage in that research, right? Going back to, you know, what Emily and Sydney have been talking all the time, like you have to go through that, you know, to look into it, to even to connect to people within that field, right? Because they are able to give you answers that are much more accurate uh, and closer to the field that you're interested than, you know, than, um, than other people. So um, I want to specifically address this one because again, uh, this person said, I know that the best way to get your foot in the door is to volunteer, but what does, what does one do if volunteering isn't financially feasible? And I just want to acknowledge that, yes, absolutely. Volunteer is a privilege because for many of us, uh, you know, like living in Vancouver is so expensive. Like, you know, tuition, very expensive. Like, let's not kid ourselves. So for many of us, it is about just making end meets, doing multiple part-time jobs just to, you know, just to get through next month. Like, how do I find time to volunteer, right? So the way I look at it is that, you know, a volunteer isn't, uh, you know, something that is feasible for you, you know, perhaps looking at, you know, paid internship opportunities, part-time jobs that are in the field, right? Because I know that for many of us, our part-time jobs are survival jobs that are not necessarily within that within that within that field but again you know using the example of if you want to work with refugees and you don't want to volunteer you know maybe you have some administrative uh experience that can you know you might be doing some administrative work but you're in that environment right so again looking for opportunities where you can get your foot in the door um that still pay you you know um <laughs> um you know for the work that you do there so that you can continue to support yourself financially but you're you know, you're, you're in the field, you're in the area where you can continue to connect with people and do your research as you go forward. Um, let's see, it's 328, you know, I, you know, I think we, you know, I think we did tell, you know, uh, promise folks that will end at 330. So maybe allow me to, you know, maybe allow me to say this and feel free to jump in Emily and, um, and Sydney. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that we will wrap up the official portion of it because I still have one slide that I want to share with, uh, you know, with everybody. And then, you know, after 3.30, I think I, you know, we will stick around to continue to answer the questions, whether, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, but you are definitely not obligated to stay. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to say that uh, there are a couple of things uh, before, you know, so you're definitely not obligated to stay, uh, but we'll stick around to continue to have that discussion. So uh, a few things. Um, just talking about your, you know, your well-being in this, you know, in this, uh, in this process, there are lots of support at SFU, but there's also for those of us who are alumni, I think, I don't think, I don't think any of us actually said we recently graduated, but here are some resources for mental health. Um, but this is what I wanted to wrap up, right? Again, it was just really barely an hour. But I want to get a sense of if you were to, you know, as a result of attending this session, right, what are one to two words that you want to describe how you feel as a result of attending this session? So, uh, you know, again, I don't expect everything to be like, you know, the clouds just parted ways, everything just become clear. If not, you might still have questions, but, you know, just collectively getting a sense of where you're at uh, at the end. So, again, uh, go on to Slido, go on to the uh, poll side or uh, not the Q&A side, but the poll tab. Uh, so you can answer the, this question. Um, I think I know a handful of you are able to find that uh, there. So while you're doing this, before we look at the words, um, uh, Emily and Sydney, do you have any last words? Um, yeah, I think my last words as a student who might be feeling similarly to some, if not all of you, and also someone who fully financially supports myself. So I understand that volunteering can be challenging in that way. Um, and I have some access needs as well. I would just say, don't limit yourself and believe in yourself where you can. Um, and so that's my best advice to you is that you can get where you want to go. Um, if you actually, you know, believe that you can get there. And that sounds like just the cheesiest thing ever, but I really mean that when you're looking at job postings or when you're thinking about reaching out to that person or not reaching out to them, don't think about the things that are wrong about you. Think about the things that are right about you. Um, and that will shine through if you think that way. So I want to just encourage you all. And I think that you're all going to go in amazing places. 
Yeah, I just wanted to add on that. Um, thank you so much, Sydney and Albert as well. Um, hopefully it's not too loud where I am. I'm just, I have my headphones in, but I just wanted to say that as Sydney was saying, you all have so much to offer. You, you also have so much space to grow. And so, you know, as, as Cindy was saying, when it comes to looking for whether it's job opportunities or other opportunities offer on campus, you know, don't, don't hold yourself back. And also realize that it's okay to feel how you're feeling, especially if you're just about to graduate, whether it's anxiety, you know, feeling, you know, not sure what you want to do. That's common. And I also would say even people later on in their 30s and 40s, we still don't know, you know, what we're doing, honestly, you know, so it's fine if you're still figuring out things, you know, as things are happening. That's the, that's a beautiful thing about your career is that you're going to be, you know, making turns, going up and down, you know, meeting different people, trying new things, you know, as life goes on, as your career progresses. So I think recognizing and accepting that it's okay to not know what's next. If the pandemic taught us anything, it means, you know, we've learned to cope when things, you know, happen, when we don't expect it, you know? So I think just recognizing that and also realize that uh, we're here to help, whether it's, you know, advisors, if you have questions about getting involved, you can contact us, you can contact Albert. We're here to help you, we're here to support you. And, you know, don't feel alone, we're here to help you whenever possible. Oh, that is so well said. Thank you again, Sydney and Emily. Uh, just wanted to, you know, make sure you have a chance to look at the words that, uh, that many of you share, right? Hopeful, informed, optimistic, uh, but also at the same time, a little, still a little nervous, uh, you know, uh, but also relieved, motivated. And I just want to say that, you know, um, this is a journey, right? Just as how Emily and, and Sydney have put it. Sometimes I get that even when I was sharing with the examples of some of the students, I kind of skipped you know, sort of the timeline of over a couple of years, you know, so, uh, so wherever you are at right now, you might just feel like, oh, my, like, I'm just looking at grouse grind, and you're at the bottom of the trail, and you're like, how am I ever going to get there? I know it's super cheesy, is really still just one step at a time. And don't be afraid to start small, right? Check out some of the resources, connect with someone that, you know, ask one question, because that one thing that you do leads to other things, and that thing might open other doors. So I can't say enough about if you're feeling hopeful, informed, and more reassured, just being spent with us the last hour, think of all the things that you can do will continue to generate that, right? Because we do need all this to sort of counter, you know, all the nervousness and all the, you know, all the uncertainty, because, you know, there, you know, there are space to hold both of them, but it's by taking action, keeping focus on what you can do, how you can learn more about what the possibilities are that can keep you going. So uh, yeah, you know, uh, again, with Korean Volunteer Services, uh, let us support you if you have any questions. Uh, one thing that you might or might not know is that we actually support uh, students or recent graduates up to one year after they graduate. So it's, uh, it's never too late to reach out if you need support. Um, but um, but again, very, very, very grateful that you are you know, choose to be with us uh, this past hour uh, and um, and all the best uh, with all to all of your future and possibilities. Uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, you know, we'll stick around for a little bit, uh, not for a little bit, for the next half an hour to continue to answer questions, but you're not obligated to stay. But, you know, but if you are uh, planning to hang around, you know, we'll keep on ans answering those questions. Yeah. And just one more point to that um, for anyone who had to duck out earlier, came back in or is looking for the link to the slides, um, we will be forwarding those to the attendees. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll have access to the slides, we'll send them out to you in an email, and then that'll have a link to this video as well. Um, so you can stay tuned for that. You're definitely going to get your hands on all the resources here. So no worries there. Excellent.